chapter 5, 25 says, After emergencies with major blood loss, a patient is placed in the Trendelenburg position in which the foot of the bed is raised to get maximum blood flow to the brain. If the coefficient of static friction between a typical patient and the bed sheet is 1.2, what is the maximum angle at which the bed can be tilted with respect to the floor before the patient begins to slide? So in this problem, I'm trying to find that angle. So I'll start by drawing a picture. So we have a bed at an unknown incline, theta. And I'm not going to draw a person. Here's a square. So uh, between this object, the patient, and the bed is a coefficient of static friction of 1.20. So I'll start by drawing a free body diagram. There's the patient, the force of gravity, the force of normal, and the force of static friction. So, I'm going to want to break this into its different components. I'll make this be positive y over this way, positive x. So, what I have is This is my normal, my force of static friction, force of gravity in the y direction, and the force of gravity in the x direction. Now we'll set up Newton's second law for forces in the y direction. So the sum of forces in the y direction equals my force of normal minus force of gravity in the y direction. Now the question is asking for uh, what the angle is for the patient to not slide, so there is no acceleration. So this would sum up to zero. I can then solve for n and say that n equals the force of gravity in the y direction. This will be helpful to hold on to. So now I'll do Newton's second law for the x direction. The sum of forces in the x direction equals the force of gravity in the x direction minus the force of static friction. So Again, we're not accelerating, so it sums up to zero. Let's say the force of gravity in the x direction equals the force of static friction. Now I have another equation that can relate the force of static friction to uh, the normal force. And this is the force of static friction equals 
coefficient of static friction times normal. So I know that the force of static friction equals the force of gravity in the x direction. Then I know my constant of static friction, and then I know n normal equals the force of gravity in the y direction. So to find these forces of gravity, I take the force of gravity, and for the x direction, I do the cosine I believe it's the cosine. No, it might be the sine. The sine of theta equals constant of static friction times the force of gravity cosine of theta. Now I know everything, well, actually first, since force of gravity is on both sides, those cancel out. Giving me sine of theta equals the cosine of static friction times the cosine of theta. And so the only thing I don't know are the theta. And so that's what I'm going to solve for. Now I can use a trigonometric identity and actually divide both sides by cosine of theta. And sine of theta over cosine of theta equals the tangent of theta. What I can do now is say that the inverse tangent of theta of my constant of static friction equals theta. So my constant is 1.2 and the inverse tangent of 1.2 equals about 50.1 degrees. And that's my answer.